Hi guys, this is Deepak, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm one of the uh, developers, and I'm one of the primary authors of PuppetDB. So this visualization is designed to solve a problem that I've had as a longtime Puppet user, and that's that I've had oftentimes the occasion to, uh, the need to explain the life cycle of a Puppet agent and the agent-master interaction uh, to someone that's not super familiar with how Puppet works at all. So for those of you that know how Puppet works, an agent is going to collect its facts, submits them to the master, a master is going to compile a catalog for that agent. Uh, then that catalog, if that store config's turned on, that catalog is going to be persisted in a database somewhere. So that's all well and good to just say, but I think it's helpful to actually visualize what's going on there. And I think this is more important because this whole concept becomes even harder if you want to start talking about the interaction between the agent and the master and what happens if one of them is slow or one piece of this pipeline is slow. And I think this is doubly hard to explain how that looks across multiple machines. What if you have, you know, five nodes, ten nodes, all talking to the same master? Do they have the same performance? Do they slow down in the same ways? And I think this is triply hard to talk about when you want to start talking about those exact cascading effects, like when stuff starts to slow down. Like what what are the bottlenecks, and what's the impact of having things slow down really badly? Um, and you know, I think it's useful to explain that to people in a clear way because the more easily they understand that, the less likely they are to deploy Puppet in a way that's really slow or claim that Puppet is slow or claim that it's not scalable. So what this white space on the screen represents is essentially your Puppet Master. And each circle represents an agent or a node that's checking in. This is sped up about 10x real time. So uh, you'll notice that each node, when it checks in, goes through a couple of different phases where both the radius of the circle may increase and the color changes. So what do the colors and the, radiuses, and the radius mean? Uh, well, red is the first color you see. So a node pops up on the screen, it's a circle that's red. And what red means is that an agent has collected its facts and it's ready to submit them to the master so that uh, you know, it can actually get a catalog compiled for it and go on about its business. Red turns to yellow as the master is compiling that agent's catalog. And you'll notice that the diameter of the circle actually increases, and it increases based on how many resources that node has. Uh, I'm using random numbers here, so nodes will have between 500 and 1,000 resources, which is why sometimes they grow to bigger circles than others. Um, yellow turns to blue when the catalog is fully, you know, is, is compiled, and it's now ready to be persisted in, uh, in the database if you're using store configs. And then the circle is going to slowly shrink, and then when the circle finally disappears off the screen altogether, that means that catalog has been completely persisted in the database, and now the agent can go about its business. If a circle has been red, you, you don't see this right now, but if a circle has been red for more than 60 seconds, then it splats on the screen under the background, and that's to represent an agent timeout. And because timeouts are bad, that's why it's represented as a splat. If you see a lot of splats on your windshield, something wrong is definitely happening. Um, so a few other details about the simulation. Like I mentioned, this is 10x real time. This is representing a four core puppet master, which means that you can do four things at the same time. So you can compile four catalogs simultaneously or be storing uh, four separate catalogs in the database. Uh, like I said, nodes have between 500 and 1,000 resources. And in order to get the performance right or the timing right for a lot of these, I took numbers both from users and from our own internal ops team and my own testing. So catalogs compile in this simulation at about 200 resources a second, which I think is about accurate, and store configs clocks in at around 10 milliseconds per resource. And like I said before, this is a 30 minute run interval, which is why um, you know, you're seeing these gaps here. So what you're seeing now is uh, 200 hosts. Um, and because you know, with 200 hosts and a run interval of 30 minutes, you're not gonna see a host every, you know, every second or anything like that. But you can see kind of what's going on. This Puppet Master is not, not overloaded or anything like that. It's able to deal with all the traffic that's coming in. So now let's say I wanna up it to 500 hosts. Okay, so now you'll notice that the frequency of incoming check-ins is, is a lot higher than it was before because you know, we have more hosts going on. Um, and as you can start to see, there's more red on the screen. So those are agents that are waiting to submit their facts to a master so they can have a catalog compiled. But the master, because it only has four cores, it can only do four things simultaneously, uh, doesn't have necessarily the, the power, the horsepower to accommodate all these requests. So as things start to, as, as an agent sits there for more than 60 seconds, and like I said, this is sped up 10x, you'll see it splat on the screen, and that's why you have all these streaks in the background. So this is an environment where, you know, with 200 nodes, everything was able to keep up just fine. But once you up it to 500 nodes, you're going to get agent timeouts and things like that. And that's not even assuming someone wants to light up, say, 
you know, half of their agents at the exact same time, maybe using live management or something like that. That would make it actually worse. This is assuming a regular run interval. So just to belabor the point, let's try and up this to a thousand nodes. Okay, so stuff is coming in pretty quickly now, and you can see, you know, it's, it's very apparent how backed up this entire environment is going to be. Now you're starting to see splats all over the place, and if we let this go, the entire screen would just end up being covered in, you know, in badness. So that's indicative of something pretty unhealthy that's going on. So a lot of this, uh, the slowest part of the operations that I've been showing you is store configs, because that's the last leg of the life cycle of, you know, kind of the agent-master relationship. So the slower store configs is, the longer it's going to take for that puppet master to get freed up so it can accommodate a new agent that wants to get something done. So this is one of the reasons why I was excited to work on PuppetDB. Um, because let's say that I was able to take store configs from instead of taking 10 milliseconds per resource to take 1 millisecond per resource. And we'll redo the exact same simulation with that only that one variable changed. And as you can see, it, it may actually be hard to see, but things are blue for barely any meaningful amount of time. And um, that's because store configs happen so quickly now that it's no longer a bottleneck. And when it's no longer a bottleneck, you remove that huge cascading effect on the rest of your system. So now this actually looks like a reasonably healthy puppet environment. And the only thing we changed was speeding up uh, store configs. And this is a classic like computer science principle, which is, you know, if you optimize the slowest part of the overall system, then you know you can get better throughput overall, which is one of the reasons why I was really excited to work on PuppetDB and why a lot of the people that have deployed it have seen you know really um, meaningful improvements in things like compilation time and just the overall health of their puppet ecosystem. Um, so I think uh, I think that's all I got. Hope you enjoyed it.